What's up guys, this is Jeff Chan from Emory Shredder and in this video, I'm gonna be giving you a full guide on when and how to use the long guard. I promise by the end of this video, you're gonna to wanna to add this guard to your arsenal. If you liked the video, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Now, before we get started, this video is sponsored by Warlocker. So before this accident here, and believe me, this wasn't the first time, I never wore a jock during training. The reason being is every previous jock I've used were very uncomfortable, so I took the risk. But after that last accident, I did some research and found Warlocker. Unlike traditional athletic cups, this jock is scientifically engineered to protect your legacy when training combat sports. Every unit is reinforced with three protective layers, allowing total flexibility and complete protection from all sides. There is all withstanding outer shield that is cushioned by a shock absorbing foam bridge and fortified by flexible side wedges. The best thing about it is it feels comfortable, as if I'm not even wearing one. If you're watching this long guard video, you are probably looking to learn how to protect yourself. Well, you can start with protecting your groin with the A3 Jock Groin Protector. Check it out in the link in the description box below and use discount code JEFF for 10% off. Okay, so why use a long guard? What are the main benefits? I would say the main benefit of using the long guard is to simply be able to keep your distance, to constantly measure with your lead arm how far your opponent is from you. So when we use a long guard, we want to extend our lead arm about three quarters. Not completely straight, but about three quarters. Does that mean I should fight with my arms out open like this? No, I would only use it when my opponent is in my range. So for example, instead of the shell guard, I would still keep my lead arm a little bit further away. So this is still my long guard. And now when my opponent moves forward at me, I'm gonna extend my arm about three quarters. And now this tells me how far my opponent is. So as you can see, his head and chest is pretty far from my lead arm, so I can feel safe. Now say he moves in forward, now look, his body is within my lead arm. Now I know I need to continue backing away. We don't need to keep our arm extended. We have our regular guard here. As he moves forward, I step back and I'm constantly measuring how far he is. Now, if you try with your partner, if you try with a shell guard, now my partner Chang here, he's gonna move an aggressive. I'm gonna end up shelling up and I'm unable to keep him at bay because I don't have my lead arm to help me measure. On the other hand, I'm gonna use a long guard. He's gonna move in aggressively at me. See how I'm constantly able to keep him outside my lead arm. If he steps in closer, I use my footwork to constantly back away. So let's move on to how to defend punches using the long guard. As a rule of thumb, I always wanna keep my hands outside of my eyebrows. So we never want to blur our face by keeping my hand covering my eye or here, because now I can't see and the hooks are, and it's gonna hit me. So I always wanna keep the hands just outside of my eyebrows. So looking here, I'm squared off with my opponent here. If my opponent throws a jab, I'm just going to turn my palm forward. So right now my palm is facing the camera as the punch comes, I'm just going to turn it forward. I'm going to deflect. And the more my opponent or partner tries to hit me, the more I'll feel that deflection. So Chang, this time he's going to actually throw a real punch at me. Right? See how I deflect that punch? I'm just turning my palm forward. And I'm also stepping back. My feet are my insurance. And notice how I also extended my lead arm because that's going to help me gauge that distance. So again, he throws a jab. I'm just going to deflect. It should be effortless. All I'm doing is turning my palm and I'm using the bottom of my thumb to deflect the punch. On the other hand, if he throws a cross, same thing. I'm gonna use the bottom of my thumb to deflect. The only difference now is because my lead arm is further away, I have more leeway. So as he throws the cross nice and slow, instead of pairing the knuckle where he can pull his hand back to his face, I'm gonna wait for that punch to come and wait, 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 and deflect the forearm. That way, if I can deflect the forearm, there's a higher chance that he overcommits and loses balance. So this time, Chang's gonna throw a real cross at me. See how I'm deflecting the forearm. I have more leeway. I can wait for the punch to pass my hand, then deflect the forearm versus pairing it too soon where he just pulls it back. So watch, he's gonna throw the cross. Boom. Boom. And see how all I'm doing is just turning my palm forward. I'm just deflecting. Think of it like a train track. The train's coming, I just turn the track and it goes to the opposite direction. On the other hand, what I don't want is he throws the cross. I don't want to 
Oh, I don't want to overcommit and paw down. I just want to deflect. Now Chang is going to throw the jab cross, a very common combination. So see how I extend that lead arm and I keep him on the outside. Whereas if I throw it, he throws a jab cross and I parry, parry, if he moves forward again, now he's, he's in my pocket and I have no way to keep that distance. So now let's work on how to defend the left hook. If Chang throws the left hook at me, I can carriage block. Again, I'm keeping my lead arm out to make sure he's outside my bubble. I can also use this lead arm to measure. So if he throws the left hook at me, I can step out of the way. I'm dropping my lead hand here, but this, is, this still acts as a measuring stick to tell me how far Chang is. Now, I always want to still comb my hair in case he has a very long hook. Oh, it's still up here. Again, the hand is up here, keeping him at bay. Best ideal situation is he throws that left hook, I don't get hit at all. So notice how I don't keep my hand here for him to hit my, my arm, I whip it down so that he misses. Now let's move on to the overhand punch. So if he throws the big right overhand, my lead hand is further out already, so instead of bringing my hand all the way back to my face to carriage block, I'm going to simply use what I call a 360 block. So Chang's going to throw that big overhand, Oh, I'm going to flare my wrist, and as he punches, it's going to just slide right down. It's very important that we flare the wrist 45 degrees. If I don't, and I come here, follow me, he's going to just break the arm and crash right into me. Another thing is, I don't want to keep it 90 degrees. We don't want a karate block, because if he does, if I do that, he's going to loop right over. Bam. It's very important that we flare 45 degrees and flare that wrist out. It actually will hurt his forearm the harder he punches. So, a very common combination is the jab into the overhand. And notice how I'm stepping back so that I'm outside and keeping him outside and not allowing him to get into my pocket. Why is it so important to keep the hands just outside the eyebrows? Because, watch, if I keep my lead hand too far out, I'm safe for the overhand, but the cross is going to be way too fast. Boom, it's going to catch me. If I keep my lead arm in front of my left eye, now the punch is going to, oh, exactly, it's going to catch me with the overhand. It's going to be too fast. And if you were to throw the cross, it's going to hit my glove, and the glove's going to hit my face, and I also can't see. So it's very important that this lead arm is outside of the eyebrow. With the right hand, it should be outside of our right elbow to parry and block. So he throws the jab, I can parry, and he throws the left hook, I can lean back. So this acts as a windshield wiper, and this acts as like a little mini windshield wiper. So look, he throws a jab, he throws a cross, he throws a right hook, oops, and right hook. <laughs> so left hand comes here, right hand comes here. Now, I've made a long guard video in the past and many uneducated martial artists believe that keeping the long guard makes you open for body shots. That's not true. The key detail about the long guard is it keeps you at a distance. And by being able to keep a distance, you can read and see punches easier. So for example, if I'm skirt off with Chang and we're standing here, do you think I can read what punch is coming? He's way too fast and athletic, military guy, too fast. On the other hand, if I'm able to keep my distance and he throws a punch, I'm able to see the punches coming. So, moving on with the body shots. Just because I'm keeping my lead arm extended and my body is technically exposed, 
as long as I'm on the outside, I can see the kicks coming. So if he threw a kick at me, I can catch. If he throws a kick, I can get out of the way by hollowing my body and extending my lean arm. Again, I'm keeping my distance. I can brush the kick. I can also check the kick. Again, just because our body's open doesn't mean it's open. We're keeping that distance with the longer so that we can read those kicks coming. If he throws a left kick, I can brush. I can step out of the way and I can catch. The idea is because my lead arm is extended, I'm able to constantly read the punches easier and kicks easier because I'm further away. Whereas if I have that tight shell guard, now I can't find that range. And yes, although my arms are close to my body and I can block, we actually don't want to block with the arms because if we're going up against someone who's good at kicking, their strategy is to actually aim to kick the arms, to drain our energy, to drain our power, and to lower our defense by damaging the arms. So by doing this, it's actually not good for the kicks. It's safe for them. He'll just keep attacking the arms until they get tired. So this is actually a better strategy to get out of the way versus staying here and letting him attack the arms. Now say he throws a body punch. Again, it's open, but I see the punch coming so I can hollow, extend my arm and make sure I don't get hit. We also got teeps. Again, we're on the outside. If Chang throws a teep at me, I can brush. He throws a left teep, I can still brush. I can still see it coming because I'm far away. So, we're gonna go through a bunch of common combinations that people will throw. So, let's start with just a jab. Jab cross. Cross hook. Cross hook. Hook cross. Jab left hook. Jab over him. Up cut cross. As you can see, the long guard, you're able to defend any punch that comes. All you're doing is windshield wiping the lead arm here and here, here and here. So guys, if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button. And if you really love my work and want to continue supporting it, send me a super thanks by hitting that donation button below.